What's going on? My name's Robert and you are watching Southpaw Auto Works. This video is all about the 4L60E pressure regulator valve and boost valve. In part one, we learned what a PR valve is, why it's needed, and how it works. We also learned how the PR valve is able to regulate a baseline pressure of right around 55 PSI. In part two of this series, in this video, we're gonna learn how the pressure regulator valve is able to regulate a line pressure of over 300 PSI. If you haven't done so already, make sure you watch part one. You can find a shortcut to that video in the video card up here or down in the video description down below. Before we dive in any further on this video, let's do a quick recap of what we've learned so far in this video series. At this point in time, we understand how pumps suck fluid in and push fluid out. We also understand that pumps don't create fluid pressure. Pumps simply move fluid, but it's the restrictions to that movement of fluid that create fluid pressure. We know that the highest working hydraulic pressure within any automatic transmission is called line pressure. We also know that line pressure can vary anywhere from right around 55 PSI to over 300 PSI. And we also understand that it varies from mild to wild in order to prevent the clutches from slipping. When automatic transmission clutches slip excessively, they burn up and they fail. And when clutches fail, the transmission fails. At this point in time, we understand that the PR valve has two forces acting on it. There's line pressure acting on this end of the valve and there's spring pressure or tension acting on the other end of the valve. This is much like a tug of war, but instead of pulling, we are pushing. In part one, I shared this PR valve stack up. It's missing the isolator spring and the boost valve. I did this intentionally just to show that it's the large outer spring that is used to establish and regulate the baseline pressure of roughly 55 PSI. In this video, we're gonna learn how to increase the spring pressure that works against the valve in order to raise line pressure above 55 PSI. The line pressure spec for the 4L60E ranges anywhere from 55 PSI to over 300 PSI, depending on the load placed on the transmission. We've learned that the spring pressure ultimately determines what line pressure will be regulated at. In the case of the 4L60E, the large outer spring will create a line pressure of 55 PSI. That is known as the base line pressure. In order to raise line pressure, we need to be able to increase spring pressure. If we can increase the spring pressure, it will require more oil pressure here to overcome the increased spring pressure located at this end of the valve. How do we increase spring pressure? This is where the boost valve and boost sleeve come into the picture. The boost sleeve lives in this portion of the pump. When the entire valve train is stacked into this portion of the pump, the boost sleeve is unable to move. It's able to wiggle just a little bit back and forth, but for the most part, it doesn't move a whole lot. However, the boost valve that lives inside of it is free to move back and forth. The boost sleeve has three lands one here, here, and here. Between this land and this land, you've got two orifices, one here and one here. Between this land and this land, we've got one orifice right here. All oil entering the boost sleeve feeds oil to one of two locations on the boost valve. Whenever oil is fed to the boost sleeve, it feeds oil to the boost valve, and the boost valve is pushed in the direction of the pressure regulator valve, like so. The boost valve is actually pushing on the isolator spring, and the isolator spring pushes on the pressure regulator valve. So by feeding oil to the boost valve, 
we're able to increase spring pressure at the pressure regulator valve. That increased spring pressure increases line pressure. It increases the oil pressure that exists here. It must increase in order to overcome the increased spring pressure at this end of the valve. The boost sleeve and valve are fed oil by two different circuits, the input reverse circuit and the torque signal circuit. More on that in the next segment. When the 4L60E is placed into reverse, two clutches are activated. The low reverse clutch that lives down on the rear of the transmission case and the input reverse clutch that lives inside of the input reverse drum. Let's take a look at the input reverse circuit first. This part of the boost valve is part of the circuit that feeds the input reverse clutch. So when oil is sent to the input reverse clutch, at the same time oil is also sent to this part of the boost valve. Seeing how line pressure is used to feed the clutches, we know that this portion of the valve is receiving line pressure. As we already know, sending oil to this portion of the boost valve increases spring pressure at the pressure regulator valve, which results in raised line pressures. When the vehicle operates in reverse, it requires higher line pressures due to higher loads placed on the 4L60E. The base line pressure in drive is right around 55 to 65 PSI. However, when the transmission is in reverse, the baseline pressure is elevated to right around 65 to 75 PSI. So the important thing to note is anytime the transmission is in reverse, oil is being fed to this portion of the boost valve. And that oil happens to be line pressure. If, for example, the vehicle is backing up a steep driveway and we have our foot into the throttle, this will put even more load on the transmission, requiring even higher line pressures in order to keep the clutches from slipping. Under heavy loads in reverse, the line pressure will rise to right around 300 to 325 PSI. In order to reach those high line pressures, we need even more spring pressure. This is where the torque signal circuit comes into the picture. With the transmission in reverse, we can further increase the line pressure by sending oil to the other section of the boost valve through this orifice. Just to be clear, at this point in time, oil is being fed to both orifices at the same time. So both sections of the boost valve are pushing towards the PR valve, creating more spring pressure for the PR valve to work against, work against, which results in higher line pressures. This section of the boost valve is fed by the torque signal circuit. The torque signal circuit has a pressure of anywhere from zero to 115 PSI. It varies with engine and transmission load. So when the 4L60E is in park or neutral and the engine's idling, there's no load on the transmission. At that point in time, there would be zero PSI of torque signal fluid at this portion of the boost valve. So when we place the 4L60E into reverse and we put our foot into the throttle, engine load increases. As engine load increases, so does the load on the transmission. As transmission load increases, the torque signal circuit delivers more pressure to the end of the boost valve, increasing spring pressure, which increases line pressure. So now we've looked at how the boost valve works with the transmission in reverse. Up next, we take a look at how it works with the transmission in drive. When we shift the 4L60E from reverse to drive, this part of the boost valve is exhausted. So the line pressure oil that was previously in this circuit is now bled off to zero PSI. So this portion of the boost valve is no longer doing anything and it will stay this way until the transmission is shifted back into reverse. The torque signal circuit that sends oil to this portion of the boost valve is solely responsible for boosting line pressure when the transmission is in drive. Once again, these pressures from the torque signal circuit vary anywhere from 0 PSI to 115 PSI. These pressures are directly proportional to transmission load. Zero load equals 0 PSI, while max load equals 115 PSI. These pressures are used to increase spring pressure at the PR valve. Increased spring pressures result in elevated line pressures. In the next video, we will learn where the torque signal circuit comes from, how the pressure is created, and more about what influences those pressure changes.
Thanks for joining me on this episode. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that like button. I would love to hear from you. Drop me a line in the comment section down below. Speaking of comments, let me know what questions you have and I will make a follow-up video answering those questions. If you haven't done so already, subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. If you're interested in helping this YouTube channel grow, there are a number of ways that you can get involved. You can find more information about that in the video description down below or at the end of the video. Thanks as always. I will catch you next time.